Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and yes, I'm getting caught up on my kits. So, today, five cards from the Simon Says Stamp April 2021 card kit, which was called Friendly Flowers. Now, as always, you can always get the stamp set that came in the kit, or if you're looking at any of the individual items. So, of course, you get your inspiration sheet. Here is the stamp set. I don't do a full reveal when it comes to these kits, there are so many that are out there, and Simon Says does a great job on their own. So I really, I focused in on the papers. Now there will be some stamping and embossing and, and so forth, but I really just fell in love with the paper choice that was in this kit. It's called Simple Stories and or the company is simple stories and it's called simple vintage cottage fields um so absolutely when simple stories does their vintage they really do an awesome job with it i took a piece of cardstock cut it four and a quarter by five and a half i went around with the vintage photo you all knew the vintage photo was going to come in just saying um, then i took a piece of black cardstock <coughs> excuse me and I used my deckle edge trimmer to trim around that. And then I cut down another piece of the cardstock from the pattern pack. I cut off a strip of the pink and white polka dots. And I'm just going to set that down onto the side. For today, I'm actually using my Nouveau Deluxe Blue. Um, and it's a liquid adhesive, which is great. That is my go-to glue when it comes to adhering my pieces. Now that I've trimmed that, I'm just going to come around that edge as well with some vintage photo. Again, you are really going to see the vintage photo today. It's just going to hang out there. I used one of the postcards from the pattern paper to use that as my sentiment. And I'm just going to place that directly on top. So we have a really nice layered card. Um, that we can put onto our standard A2 size card base. I'm actually using one of the card bases that came in the kit. It's an ivory, and it is four and a quarter by five and a half, and it is a side folding card. For the next card, I'm going to put some glue onto um, a piece of cardstock, and then I just want to place uh, that paper down onto it. Um, and then I'm going to use the cardstock, which is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half, to trim my paper um, instead of trying to cut each one. At least this way I know it's covered and it's there. Then taking this, it's a pink modded background with some dark cho charcoal um, polka dots. Um, And then I'm coming in with the vintage photo. I'm trying to find my phone so that it doesn't make that sound anymore. I do apologize. And I just tore it. Um, you know, we don't have to use our cutters. You know, our hands are really the best cutters that we have. Um, so just to create that torn look is absolutely perfect. So I'm going to do that with another piece of cardstock that I had there off to the side. So I'm going to have these two pieces layered. And again, just by tearing them like that, you're adding texture. Um, you're, you're, and with this vintage photo, you're creating that dimension um, when it comes to that. I'm going to place that down onto the right-hand side. And I will trim that um, so that it's even with the... Uh, design base and then I will come in with the other piece as well. I am going to move that up just a little bit. If I move, kept that on to as the size that it is, it would have overpowered the two designs that I had, or at least I felt it would have overpowered the two designs down below. Um, and I didn't want to do that. I did not want to lose those beautiful images that are sitting on that original cardstock that we put down. Remember, when it comes to paper pads, when it comes to card kits, um, everything is made to intertwine together. Um, I get a lot of questions, you know, how did you know to put this with that? How did you know that that was going to go with that? 
Um, when it comes to a kit, they are designed that way. They are designed so that everything will work with each other. And again, especially those pattern papers that are in there, especially when they are paper pads, um, they are designed to work together. You may not look it, but they, they truly are. So you're never going to go wrong in doing that. I grabbed a sentiment from the stickers that came in the kit. They are also by Simple Stories and they are part of this Simple Vintage Cottage Fields collection. And I just put that down onto the bottom. For this panel here, we are going to do some ink smushing. So when I do my ink smushing, I do like to use a craft mat, not a piece of glass. When I use a craft mat and I put the ink down and I add my water, it will bead up. If I do that on a piece of glass, it will not bead up. It will... Um, give me a watercolor effect. If that's what I'm looking for, then that's exactly what I'll do. I love the speckles. You can see when I put my cardstock in, and this is just regular 110 pound cardstock, um, I'm going straight down and coming back up. I'm not swishing it. I'm not turning it. I'm going straight down and up. That's what gives me the effect that I look for that you can see off to the right. As long as, now I'm going to sop up my ink, as long as you dry in between your inks, so I went with Tattered Rose and Aged Mahogany here. I did the Tattered Rose f first. As long as you dry that first or you let it dry, you will be able to add another color on top of it. Again, we're not swooshing this card around. We're going down and we're coming back up. So you will be able to maintain those two colors together with a little blending going on. On top of this, now that this panel's dry, I'm going to add what I refer to as the snow blizzard. So I've got my white um, watercolor by PH Martin coming in here um, that will not react with the inks, the distress inks, because they are water reactive. Um, so this is bleed proof um, when it comes to this watercolor white. And I just splattered that, had all kinds of fun with it, um, and then also splattered some green into that. And again, you can see because I'm splattering, I'm not mixing this around, I'm not getting a mix because red and green will give you brown. Um, and I don't have that. So the Vintage Photo Galore, after I used my deckled edge on that panel that we ink smushed, again, I'm just using a piece of white cardstock and I'm putting that vintage photo around, making sure I'm coming in pretty far. So it's another way to get your white card stock to stretch. Maybe you don't have many colors. You can create colors with your inks by just going around those edges and pulling it in just a little bit. Using a piece of the black with ivory polka dot card stock, and I'm going to create a panel here. Again, also using my deckled edge trimmer um, for all of my trimming because it's awesome. Yes. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, do you have this? We're surprised we don't see this. And you can see as I use this because of where my uh, phone holder sits, it sits right on the table. So it does shake. So I do apologize for the shaking that's going on here. Um, but yes, you can see. I do use it, um, and I use it a lot, mainly, honestly, on my journals um, to cut my pig, my pages down for my signatures, um, and that's really where I use that. Um, other than that, I'm using a ruler or I'm hand tearing um, when it comes to the smaller pieces. So you can see we have this beautiful ink uh, smushed background. And then I'm going to use this large focal sticker. I am going to go around that as well. And I'm going to straddle that sticker over a piece of darker pink cardstock. So that piece is going to sit off to the left. And then <clears throat> obviously we're going to trim this down, which I forgot. Um, I still want to keep the, the stickiness of that sticker. So here I changed that block of the black and ivory polka dots to a stripe. So it's kind of like creating your own washi tape. 
um, when you cut your cardstocks. This is just a regular rectangle pattern. You don't have to use, by all means, and of course, the deckled edge trimmer. This would look just fine with straight edges, or you could just use your hands to tear around those shapes to get that torn look, which honestly would give it a more organic look. Again, using one of those sentiments, and then I have our focal point down in the left-hand corner. I'm going to continue to look at some of uh, these items here because they are absolutely adorable. We're going to use some double-sided foam squares, and I'm just going to bend that. And by putting the foam squares underneath the far end of the wings, it's going to allow that butterfly to hold on to its dimension. Now, of course, I forgot to come in with the vintage photo, so we're going to real quick go around that. And then we are going to be adding just one more butterfly. It's kind of, again, I work in threes. So I've got the focal point and I have that one butterfly coming off. I just need a third item um, sitting on this card as well. Again, it's just what my eye looks like, um, but I do go with those rule of thirds um, for some reason. And then again, just pushing that down, having glue in the center so that that center stays down onto the card um, and then having them propped up with the double-sided foam squares. So now I'm going to create a card using one of Tim Holtz's quote bands um, and the ribbon that came into the kit. So just fell in love with these butterflies, love the look, love the fact that they look like they're watercolored. Um, love the boldness of these colors. I mean, while these colors are muted because of the vintage feel, to have this ivory and black, um, the polka dots, the stripes, um, the bold prints with the turquoise and the dark pink um, and the almost reds sitting in there. It just is magnificent. Um, again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking a four and a quarter by five and a half panel. I'm putting glue on that and then I'm placing it down onto the cardstock um, and then just trimming around that. And then this way I know I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. Again, I used my deckled edge to cut this panel. I um, haven't decided where I'm going to break that um, for this card and where I'm going to place those butterflies yet. So you can see I'm kind of really looking at that and saying, okay, what do I want to do? Because it is painting me, um, honestly, to cut into one of those butterflies. I'm going to use my tear ruler, which has taken many moons for me to learn. Um, yeah, you know, I am such an awesome operator at times. So I'm looking at that to give me a band that's going to sit next to that. It's going to help frame those butterflies. Now, don't get me wrong. They look absolutely perfect on that striped cardstock, um, but I just want them to really come off of that page. So I'm just playing around with all of my card stocks. You can see I did very little editing in this video. So I'm keeping a lot of what I did in. The other question I get asked a lot is what's my process? How do um, I create, you know, come up with the ideas for the cards that I show to you all? Um, so, and I had shown that in, um, I believe it was the June Spellbinders card kit. I had a video put at the end of that, um, just how I do that. Uh, the Spellbinders kit is definitely one that I absolutely love to collage with. Um, I love all of the elements and it just, um, a little bit, it cuts into that card kit because there's so much that we can do. Um, but you can see I've decided, all right, you know what? I want those three colors. So I made sure I used my ruler down below 
and on top of those that I wanted to keep. And that's going to fit onto my card uh, perfectly. I'm going to, I place that down onto this panel just to get the measurement of it. Now, again, you can tell I don't like measuring. Um, I'll put something on top of it so that I can know, okay, here's the, here's the border that I want sitting on this. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I really measure is my base panel and that's four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, and if I want to trim that down, it goes to four to five and a quarter usually, um, you know, cause we don't have to measure. Um, some people do by all means. So, I mean, you can just measure it out. You know, you would just measure the width of those three butterflies and you could either add a quarter of an inch or a half an inch. So whatever you add, half is going to be on each side of that image. Um, I tend to just like to go with it, you know, go with that flow and see what we create, see what comes of it. Um, because we are, we're creating that art. I know some, a lot of you have heard me say that before, you know, we're taking something, you know, it is something, um, but we're turning it into something else. Um, and that's hard. That's the whole premise of it. So, you know, that's what we do. I'm taking that ribbon and I'm uh, threading it through the um, quote band. And then I'm just looking at where I want that quote uh, to sit. I'm actually going to use an extremely uh, strong double-sided tape. I get this from Uline and I'm going to cut this down. Um, but it is extremely strong. Uh, this is completely unforgiving. Um, once it touches paper, it's down. Um, but I absolutely love it. Um, I use it a lot. If I have a watercolor panel and it's a little bit warped, um, that kind of straightens her out, um, gets her in place where I need her. Um, and I also use it to attach if I'm using uh, any fun foam instead of using glue um, or anything like that. So I know this band is just not going to go anywhere. <laughs> also going to put it on the back because again, this is a ribbon um, and glue will hold it down. It just was not going to be quick enough for me. So by using the tape, I can have it immediately um, put together and faceted down. Here comes the fun foam, speak of the devil. So I take my card panel and I put it down to, towards the left and I cut around it, which will make it um, centered into that panel there. Place that onto my standard A2 size card base and that card is set. Now, awesome me um, forgot to hit record on this card. So we're just going to freeze this here so that you can see it. And what I did was um, I used my watercolors and I stamped the image using my clear ink from Simon Says, and I used their cream ultra fine detail embossing powder. And then I just did an extremely messy watercolor, nothing uh, fancy. I let it bleed out from away from it. And you could see it's a Prima vintage uh, watercolor pan. Um, the colors are beautiful. They're soft, they're pastel. They're just vintagey looking. Um, so I do apologize for that. I'm sure someone will be upset and, you know, sorry. Um, but yeah, I just totally forgot that I did not hit record. So yeah, my bad. So I'm cutting the background panel and I'm going to use, now also the paper that I used uh, was Bristol. I used my Bristol cardstock for that. I'm cutting a piece of charcoal cardstock and ivory cardstock. Um, and I'm going to layer those two together. And what that's going to do is give us just a small frame that goes around this image. Again, keeping it soft, gray will do that. Gray will keep your image soft, even though it's a, it's a darker gray, um, but it's, it's that soft shade. Uh, I'm just making sure that this panel is dry um, before I put it onto my panel there and I'm using my heat tool um, to do that. 
I'm constantly keeping that heat tool moving um, so that it doesn't affect my heat embossing. Here I come with that double-sided tape again. I'm going to put that down onto my panel. You can also put it onto the watercolor panel as well. And then when I put this down, whether it's on the panel, the design panel itself, or um, the panel like I just did, I keep my index finger in between and I just slowly bring it down to that to make sure that I am as centered as I can be. Um, again, I don't measure it. And there's been many times that I'm off. And you know what? That's okay. You know, it, it's a beautiful handmade card. Um, so things won't be perfect. That's what makes it handmade. So I'm going to put my card um, into my stamp positioning tool and I'm stamping the sentiment, sending smiles um, using my oxides because they stamp beautifully. So those are the cards um, that we created. Again, I do apologize um, for the last one that I forgot to hit record. I very sorry about that. Um, but this is a wonderful kit. Know that the stamp set is still available. It is a beautiful stamp set. has a beautiful floral image and then extra floral images as well that you can create your own scene and even a butterfly. Um, I'm not sure if the papers are still available, but if they are, I'll link them down below. So as always, the products that I used will be linked down below. No, they are affiliate links. And again, no extra cost to you. I do receive a small commission. Just want to be transparent. If you have any comments, please make sure you leave those down below um, or questions and I will make sure that I get back to you as soon as I can. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Um, enjoy, smile, but remember what's most important to me, always be creative. Till the next video, guys. Take care.